On the 6th of April 2022, OpenAI announced their latest model, DALI 2, that can create high-resolution images and art given a text description. The images DALI 2 creates are original and realistic. It can also mix and match different attributes, concepts, and styles. The photorealism of the images that are created, the variations that DALI 2 can come up with, and also being able to create images that are highly relevant to the captions that are given is what makes DALI 2 one of the most exciting innovations this year. So what can it do? DALI 2's main functionality is to create images given a certain text or a caption. But on top of that, it can also edit images and add some new information, for example, add a couch to a empty living room space. And on top of that, you can also create alternatives or variations to a given image. Let's take a look inside and understand how it works. DALI 2 consists of two parts. One, to convert captions into a representation of an image, called the prior, and another to turn this representation into an actual image, this part is called the decoder. The text and image representations used in DALI 2 are coming from another technology, again developed by OpenAI, called Clip. So to understand how Clip is used in DALI 2, let's take a closer look first at what Clip is. Clip is a neural network model that returns the best caption given an image. So it basically does the opposite of what we want to do with DALI 2, but it is still helpful for us. It is a contrastive model, so it doesn't try to classify images. Instead, what it does is match images to their corresponding captions. So it shouldn't be surprising to you to learn that it is trained on image and caption pairs that is collected from the internet. So just imagine how many caption and image pairs can be collected only from Instagram. So to be able to do the matching, Clip trains two encoders. One encoder turns images into image embeddings and the other encoder turns text or caption into text embeddings. If the word embedding is not familiar to you, just know that it is basically a mathematical way of representing information. For example, taking a sentence that looks like this and turning it into a vector, we are basically embedding it in a different space. So the problem clip is optimizing for is making sure that the similarity between the embedding of an image and the embedding of its caption is as high as possible. If we organize the image and text embeddings like so, let's say I1 being the embedding of the first image, T1 being the embedding of the first image's caption, and values in the matrix being the similarity between intersecting embeddings, we want the blue highlighted cells to have the highest value and the gray ones to have the lowest value. There is more you can learn about Clip, of course, but this is enough to understand how it is used in DALI. So let's get back to the DALI architecture. The blue vector shown here is the clip text embedding and the orange one is the clip image embedding. The prior takes the clip text embedding which is easily generated from the caption through the clip text encoder and creates a clip image embedding out of it. In the paper, the researchers try two different options for the prior. One of them is called the autoregressive prior and the other one is called the diffusion prior. But they found out that the diffusion model worked better for DALI 2. In case you're not familiar with it, let's talk about what diffusion models are for a second. Diffusion models are generative models and their working principle is actually quite simple. Diffusion models take a piece of data, for example, a photo, and gradually add noise to it over time steps until it is not recognizable anymore. And from that point, they try to reconstruct this image to go back to its original form. And by doing that, they learn how to generate images or data. All right, back to DALI 2. So once the prior creates the clip image embedding, the next step is to create the image itself and the decoder is responsible for that. But before we go further here, you might think, hey, wait a minute, why can't we just pass the caption or the text embedding directly to the decoder to create the image? Why do we need a prior at all? Well, that's a really good question and the authors ask themselves the same thing too. So they tried the model by passing the caption directly to the decoder and also the text embedding directly to the decoder. And they found that having the prior actually yields the best results. Let's look at an example that was shared in the paper to understand this a little bit better. So for the caption, a hedgehog using a calculator, passing the caption directly to the decoder gives this image or passing the text embedding directly to the decoder gives this other image. 
there as if we have a prior, this is the output image that we get. So you can see that using the text embedding actually gives a acceptable result, right? But the problem with that is then you lose the capability of generating variations over images. But we will talk about how DALI 2 generates variations of images a little bit later in this video. Let's move on to the decoder. In DALI 2, the decoder is also a diffusion model, but it is an adjusted one. As the decoder, the authors are using another model that was created by OpenAI called Glide. Glide itself is an image generation model, but differently from a pure diffusion model, it also includes the embedding of the text that was given to the model to support the image creation process. So at the end, you will be creating an image based on the text. In DALI 2, the decoder is set up so that it not only includes the text information like in Glide, but it also includes the clip embeddings to support the image generation. After a preliminary image is created that is 64 times 64 pixels, there are two upsampling steps to make the images high resolution. And this is how image generation happens with DALI 2. But let's also take a look at how the variations are created with DALI 2. Making a variation of a given image means that you keep the main elements and the style of an image, but change the trivial details. In DALI 2, this is done by obtaining the image's clip image embedding and running that through the decoder. By encoding an image using clip and then decoding this image embedding using the diffusion decoder, we can also see what information was caught by clip and what information was lost. For example, we see that in Salvador Dali's painting, Clip manages to keep the detail of the existence of a clock as well as the stylistic details, while varying the trivial details of the image. All right, we learned how Dali 2 works, but how can you make sure that this is a good model? How can you evaluate it? As you can imagine, evaluating a creative model like Dali 2 is challenging because you cannot just use simple metrics like accuracy or mean percentage error. To evaluate DALI 2, the authors asked humans to assess the products of this model in terms of caption similarity, photorealism, and sample diversity by looking at example created images and answering some questions. The authors found that DALI 2 was strongly preferred when it came to sample diversity. All in all, looking at the examples that are created, it is not hard to be convinced that this is a groundbreaking model. Now it's time to talk about some limitations. As impressive as DALI 2 is, there are still some shortcomings and potential risks of it. First of all, DALI 2 is worse at binding attributes to objects than other models like Glide. For example, when asked to depict a red cube on top of a blue cube, it tends to confuse which cube needs to be red and which one needs to be blue. Furthermore, it is not yet good at creating coherent text in images. Here is what it came out with when asked to create an image of a sign that says deep learning. The authors also observed that the model has a hard time producing details in complex scenes. For example, when generating an image of the Times Square, the screens seem to not have any readable or understandable detail to them. Apart from its shortcomings, as with all highly successful generative deep learning models, there are some risks to DALI 2. It has biases commonly seen in models trained on data that was collected from the internet. For example, gender bias profession representation and images depicting dominantly Western locations. And there are, of course, risks of DALI 2 being used to create fake images with malicious intent. OpenAI has a page with a deeper look into the limitations and risks of DALI 2. You can read more about it through the link in the description. So knowing all these limitations and risks, what is OpenAI doing to make sure they don't cause any harm? Well, following the announcement for DALI 2, the OpenAI team has come up with some precautions to mitigate risks, such as removing adult, hateful or violent images from their training, not accepting prompts that do not match their guidelines, and phasing access to users to contain possible unforeseen issues. Alright, so DALI is an amazing model, it is all fun and creative, but it is fair to ask the question, what is the benefit of a model like this? OpenAI explains their goal like so. Our hope is that DALI 2 will empower people to express themselves creatively. DALI 2 also helps us understand how advanced AI systems see and understand our world, which is critical to our mission of creating AI that benefits humanity. 
As it stands, it is one of the only bridges between image and text understanding, and it is a really good step towards bigger achievements. It can even help us understand how brains and creative processes work. And now a question for you. Do you know what DALI 2 is named after? If you have a guess, leave it in the comment section.